Hi, everybody. Charles from GMAT Ninja Tutoring here. Today, we're going to talk about the data insights section of the GMAT focus as a whole. What's on it? How should you think about really what's on it? What skills are they testing? What's the right mindset to take when you're approaching this section? How should you go about studying it? How should you sequence your studies? What materials should you use? And then we're going to finish up talking about time management. All right, I'm going to get the basics out of the way first and foremost here. What kind of questions are on here? I don't want to spend too much time on this. I don't want you guys obsessing over all the minutia of this. So five different question types. That makes data insights a little bit unusual for the GMAT. We've never seen a section that has more than three different question types on it. Honestly, in a way, these aren't so different. Data sufficiency, I'd say, feels a little bit different than the others. The rest is you're analyzing charts and graphs, and you have to read stuff and analyze it in tandem with charts and graphs. After a while, you practice this a little bit. The question styles are going to start to blur a little bit. And honestly, that's good. Because what this is really about is how you process information, how you process data. Now, the numbers I've got you looking at now, this is directly from GMAC. Uh, before they launched the GMAT Focus in 2023, uh, they released some information about how often these different question types are going to appear on the test. Again, I don't want you obsessing over this, partly because GMAC is giving us ranges. They're not saying it's going to be exactly this number. Um, what we're seeing so far is data sufficiency, generally going to see about six questions out of the 20. So four to eight questions is the range you might see. Graphics interpretation, second most common question type, four to six questions. Table analysis, kind of like Excel, you're going to see two to four of those. Two-part analysis could be anything. I'll say more about that in a moment. Another two to four questions. And according to GMAC, multi-source reasoning, again, could be anything, generally some combination of data displays and text that you have to sift through, some quant, some verbal in there. Again, I'll explain more of that in a moment. Uh, they say you're going to see two to four questions. In practice, that doesn't really make sense. Multi-source reasoning is a funny little thing. Three questions per set of information. They're going to give you two or three tabs with charts, graphs, text, whatever they want to give you. And you'll see three questions attached to that set of tabs. So in practice, you're not going to see two to four questions. What we're seeing so far in the actual exam, you're either going to see one set, three questions, or two sets with six questions. Now, I don't want you to overthink this. Part of why I'm saying all this is just so that if you're new to the GMAT focus, you get a general sense of the question types, five different things going on. OK, graphs, charts, text, all kinds of things. Fantastic. Bottom line, 20 questions, 45 minutes, fair amount of variety in there. And again, if you're interested in diving deeper into these, we have videos on each one of these question types. But here's the big picture, five different question types, some a little bit more frequent than the others, but not a huge difference there. And you've got about two minutes and 15 seconds per question on average. We'll talk more about time management in a moment. OK. That's the big picture. Not all that interesting. What are we really doing here? What's GMAC after? Why did they create this new section? What's the deal here? Now, look, their, their whole goal is to say, if you're pursuing an MBA or graduate business education of some other sort, it's important for you to be able to process data, process information, determine whether you have enough information, maybe even sift through bad information. So what they're saying is this is an attempt to sort of test your ability to process something that resembles real world data graphs, charts, maybe text paired with it. Now, here's the thing you're going to notice quite a bit as you start to tackle data insights. A lot of these data displays, frankly, are kind of crappy. Like, have you ever been in an office situation and there's that intern who's really pretty smart and kind of awesome, but they're still kind of figuring out how to create data displays and they dump something on your desk and you're like, what the bleep is this? And you know they've got some really good useful data under there, but you're looking at what they gave you, some goofy chart with three or four different axes somehow crammed into a two-dimensional thing. And you go, what is this that I'm looking at? Yeah, that's how this feels. They're going to give you too much information. They're going to give you information that's ambiguously worded. They're going to give you data displays that just aren't perfect sometimes. And that's great. That's kind of the whole point. Can you look at it? and decipher the things that you really need to answer the specific questions they're giving you. If you're a perfectionist and you're tackling data insights, you might have some trouble because some of these things are deliberately not perfect, just the way they are in the real world. They're not perfect. Can you still pull insights out of them? That's a big part of what they're testing you on. When I say TMI here, too much information, you're going to see that as a theme throughout our videos on data insights. We like to pick on the questions that are really common on the GMAT now where they give you a lot more information than you need. You got to cut to the heart of the thing that you actually need to answer a particular question. And there's going to be a feeling of ambiguity a lot of the time on these questions. Now, I'm not saying that it's really going to be a judgment call between one right answer and another. There's going to be a pretty bright line. I think they've created a pretty fair test here. As you get to know the section better, you're going to understand what we mean by that. Questions are going to feel ambiguous, and you're going to go, well, well, wait a minute. Depending on how I look at this, there could be a different answer. 
But a lot of the time when you really drill with great precision of the language used in the questions and used in the text, there's no ambiguity at all, but there's a feeling of it. And you're going to see that quite a bit in our videos as well. We're going to spotlight that and say, hey, here's something, multi-source reasoning, for example, we spotlight a couple of question types where you say, well, well wait a minute, this doesn't feel like there's a very clear answer. But once you really learn to pay attention to the language that GMAT gives you exactly as they've written it, you're going to get better and better. And the test is going to feel less ambiguous over time. Now, what are the skills you need for it? Really, really important thing here, guys. There really isn't a ton that you need to study to succeed on Data Insights exactly. Any quant topic is fair game. You're going to see pretty much everything. You're going to see a lot of word problems, a lot of algebra, uh, bits and pieces of things like number properties, probability, even overlapping sets, statistics, certainly. Now, pretty much all of those things also appear on the quant section. So that kind of gets me into how should you study for data insights? I'd really advise you, if you have shaky quant skills, if you don't know a lot about statistics, if you go, I have no idea what a median is, I have no idea what range is, I really struggle with word problems, I don't really know how to handle percents or ratios. Yeah, master that stuff first, because you're going to see it peppered throughout data insights. Now, there's also a verbal component here. You're going to be reading these texts. A lot of them feel quite a bit like critical reasoning. Uh, so what I want most of you guys to do, I want you to focus first. If you're shaky on critical reasoning, reading comprehension, build those skills up first. If you've got some holes in your fundamental quant understanding of, of basic topics, fill in those holes first. And then you're going to be in better shape to apply that specifically to data insights in this structure where you're seeing funky data. Now, the other reason I'm, I would really, really urge you to master your quant skills and your critical reasoning skills first is, as always, there's a limited supply of these questions. Data Insights is a new section as of 2023. Yes, a lot of the question types have existed previously. But for some of those question types, we really only have 70 to 100 questions in print that are official at the moment. That number is obviously going to grow over time. That might sound like a lot to you. Hey, I'm going to go do 100 questions for two-part analysis or 70 questions for table analysis. It really isn't much, though. So if you think you're going to be studying for the GMAT for months, I'd advise you to maybe do a practice test early on, get a taste of data insights, see what the section is like. If you've got weaknesses on quant and critical reasoning, focus your energy there first. When you feel like you've stabilized or as good as you want to be there, then start practicing those official data insights questions and use the newer official guides 2023 and newer. Yes, some of these question types existed beforehand. Actually, all of them did. But they did make some updates to them, data sufficiency in particular. Very, very strongly encourage you to use the newer editions, if at all possible, 2023 and newer to get the things that really feel 100% like Data Insights as it appears on the GMAT focus. Okay, so don't binge on Data Insights questions early in your prep. If you're going to be here for a few months or even longer prepping, can't say it enough, focus on quant, focus on critical reason or reading comp and then come back and really try to apply those skills to data insights. That way you don't burn through the good materials too quickly and you're gonna maximize your performance here in the long run. All right, third and final thing I'm gonna cover here, time management. GMAT focus, all three sections, quant, verbal, data insights. You can change up to three answers. You can review everything, anything you want to. So you can flag questions, there's a review screen you can pull up and then you can change up to three of them afterwards. Now that's not a ton. So you can change three questions out of 20. It's not a lot, but there's your safety valve. Other thing I want to really emphasize here, the predecessor to Data Insights was a section called Integrated Reasoning. Most test takers found it to be incredibly time pressured. We're filming this fairly early into the GMAT Focus's lifespan. Data Insights has only been around operationally for a couple of weeks here as I film this. What we're all feeling, what we're seeing out of our students is that, that Data Insights does feel pretty time pressured for a lot of people. You're almost certainly not going to be able to spend all the time you want on all 20 questions. You're going to have to make some choices, allocate your time wisely. Now, I'm sure some of you watching this are blazingly fast. If you are, fantastic. If you're having no trouble, wonderful. Forget about what I'm about to say. For most of you, though, you're going to see questions on data insights that make your eyeballs bleed. You're going to go, what is this data display? What is this data sufficiency question really asking me to do? Maybe you start spinning your wheels with some arithmetic, some trial and error, all kinds of things. You're reading a text and just going, I don't really know what this means. It happens to almost all of us. Now, when that happens, don't be a hero. It's an adaptive test. Really, really hard to get all 20 questions right. For most of you, that is not a realistic goal. Adaptive test is trying to find the level of question at which you get roughly half right, half wrong. So you're going to see questions that are tough. The questions are going to get harder and harder if you're doing well until it hits the level where you're going to struggle. 
don't be stubborn. The last thing you want to do is spend four minutes, six minutes, eight minutes on a question, have to scramble on others. That's a terrible allocation of time. You're going to get yourself into trouble and cause a lot more damage to your score than you need to. You don't want to over-focus on some questions, scramble on others. That's how you destroy your score. So if you start to feel stuck on a question, you read it, you read it twice, you read it carefully, and you go, I don't know what's going on here. Just guess and move on. Mark it, guess, move on. You can always come back and change it later if you have time. Be 100% consistent with this. If you start to flail bell out on that question, mark it, come back to it later. The single worst mistake we're seeing from students so far, it's not their ability to read a chart or read a graph or think through the math on data insights. Single biggest mistake we're seeing tactically as test takers is they look at a, a particular question on data insights and go, I'm going to beat this guy to the ground until I get it right. Don't do that. I don't care if it's the first question, third question, 20th question. If you're stuck, mark it, let it go. Nothing's worth more than two and a half, three minutes or so. If you can do that really consistently, allocate your time being really careful on the ones you know how to do, save time on the ones you don't know how to do. And when you're done, go back through the ones you struggled on, see if you can see something and get it right on the next pass. But don't be a hero, let things go. Can't emphasize it enough, super important. And again, they give us this nice safety valve. You can change three of them. All right, that's it for today. If you want to deep dive in any of the question types, we've got videos for all of them. If you've enjoyed this, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. And if there's anything else you want to, want to see out of our Data Insights videos, hit us up in the comments and we'll do our best to produce something that will help you out. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.